Okay, I'm on a boat <laughs> in the middle of a lake in Ueno Park in Tokyo and other people on boats are probably staring at me because I have a guitar and a guitar case in the boat and a camera on the front. I'm really trusting the gorilla pod at the moment that it's not going to end up in the water. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd do another little instalment of how you can start to compose your own pieces. This one actually has a slightly dual purpose. When I was first learning, uh, I was actually having lessons with Eric Roche, and he, um, Matt is learning how to do the percussive stuff, not first learning guitar. He suggested that uh, when you come to do an arrangement of a piece, the bass line is probably about the best place to start. So, for example, we were working on um, his arrangement of Smells Like Teen Spirit and also his arrangement of um, She Drives Me Crazy. Now in those arrangements, uh, they've got a really, really strong bass line, and indeed Teen Spirit starts off basically just with the, the bass line and the harmonics. So what I'm going to suggest to you if you're composing a piece is that perhaps you look at making a really solid bass line and then putting the melody line in over the top of it. An example of this in uh, a modern piece that I can think of just uh, off the top of my head would be Bass Line for Kids by MGMT, which is just really solid. And then everything else comes in over the top of that. Now personally when I play that I do a little variation and actually make the bass line uh, drop down rather than doing this movement just here. So in the arrangement that I do I play like this. first place that I started when I was looking at how to um, put that onto just a single guitar was uh, the bass line. Getting the bass line going and then working out what the melody was and the melody just sticks really closely to, to a scale just there. Etc. just goes round and round. I'm going to do another lesson on uh, composing melody lines but that gives you a rough idea of what's going on just there. In a guitar piece a good example would be Roundabout by Eric Roche, which starts off basically just with a riff on the bass strings. Of course I'm in different tuning for that. And that just loops around. Obviously he doubles it up then and plays on the D string just here, as well as the top string which is down tuned to a D. And that loops around and then you get the bass drum and everything coming in. and that just goes round and round and round. So quite a good place to start with all of this will be just finding um, some, I don't know, comfortable area to work in. I find that if I drop down to a D, it makes bass lines a lot easier to do and you also get that nice rich low, low note in the top just there. And uh, just looking through sort of like old funk songs, Michael Jackson songs, uh, disco, all of that kind of stuff, stuff that had a really solid bass line to it and that you can really hear the bass line obviously. So Quincy Jones period, Michael Jackson is perfect for this because it all revolves around that bass line that uh, Quincy Jones had probably more than a small part in writing. Also looking at some sort of Stevie Wonder stuff like Master Blaster. <laughs> just goes round and round and round and you can see that you can gradually build that. Now when you're when you're looking at putting everything that we've talked about together, so you're working in maybe an altered tuning, you're working maybe in a strange time signature, and you're thinking about sort of layering it, so you're building up the bass line and then you're adding the melody line and then maybe you're adding chords and then you've got to think about different sections of things. It's important to remember that you don't need to do all of the crazy techniques at once and often you can imply a lot of what uh, you end up doing throughout the song. So for example, if you do something at one point and then you keep everything else going basically the same, the audience kind of have this persistence of hearing and they will almost hear that over the top of the rest of the song. And that's one of the things that allows you to arrange um, songs which are designed for vocals and guitar and bass and drums so effectively on the acoustic guitar because you don't have to do them all together 
to get the impression that you actually are doing them all together. So in She Drives Me Crazy, you just add in a couple of little clicks every here, uh, every now and again just on the strings, and it implies that you're doing the whole drum beat when actually you're just doing a really simple clicking part, and then doing some of the more crazy drum stuff when you're just doing the chords, but it seems to the untrained ear like you're actually keeping this going all the way through it. I hope this has been another little useful lesson, hope it ties in quite nicely with the other one, and with any luck I'm going to do a couple more of these before I leave Japan. So. I'm going to say goodbye and pedal back to the dock at the lake. See you later.